Okay, I'll sure. call this meeting to regular meeting to order for April the 18th, 2023. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the April 18th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. So we have uh, the fire chief with us on video, Mr. Harvey and CFO Gadida. Yeah. And we also have Mr. Gade and uh, Arif Gade and Mr. Bolchuk and the audience of the delegation tonight. Do you know which one? Yeah. Result of the minutes, the minutes of the April 11, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobic, second by Councilor Bolchuk. Discussion, all in favor? carried. Okay, moving right on for 4.1, our delegation tonight, uh, Reeve Gade representing the Chamber of Commerce and also Mr. Boychuk representing the Chamber of Commerce. So welcome gentlemen. I will turn it over to you, to you guys. You folks all have a copy of this electronically? They do. Perfect. Uh, so good evening council, it's nice to see you all here. I haven't seen many of you for sometimes a couple hours today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tonight, uh, certainly while I am the Reeve, I'm here representing Chamber, so most of my comments tonight represent uh, what Chamber has to say, but obviously an issue like this uh, is affecting Swan Valley West as well, so we have uh, concerns with crime. I'm going to spend two minutes just making sure we're all talking about the same issue, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but we have a, a crime problem and we also have a safety problem, and they're not exactly the same. We have people <coughs> committing crime, but we have people that don't feel safe in our community and every time I go to a meeting with citizens, I hear them discussing when it's safe to go to Swan River to buy groceries. And they debate what time of day they could come to a grocery store and hope to enter it and leave it without being harassed or without feeling unsafe. And from the Chamber of Commerce point of view, that is a huge problem. We must have people feeling safe to shop in Swan River because our businesses depend on it. We need those customers. And unfortunately, we've already heard from some people that are taking a business out of Swan River because they don't feel safe here and when possible they go out of town so that's why we're making a presentation tonight because we need to increase that level of safety we have been considering a community patrol vehicle uh, and there's a bit of history of this so it came up a few months ago uh, the first discussion was getting a vehicle for copp and we sort of went down that path for a while trying to encourage a vehicle into there uh, we've changed directions a little bit to try and find a program that better fits the needs of the community so the Chamber of Commerce is proposing a community patrol vehicle that would do three things. Essentially, it would be one vehicle that has three options to how it works. So some of the time that vehicle would be used by COPP for their patrols, so their members would be able to be in that vehicle and drive around the community. Uh, they've expressed some concerns in the past about whether they want to use personal vehicles or not. So this would give an opportunity for them to use something other than their personal vehicle to allay those fears. I understand there isn't necessarily a lot of history of personal vehicles being an issue with COPP, but certainly if that's a barrier to people patrolling, we want to make sure as a chamber we provide every support we can so they can use a vehicle and feel safe. Um, secondly, we're looking at chamber volunteers to use a vehicle. Uh, we've had several business owners indicate they would be interested in using a vehicle and doing patrols. Um, and in that mode, uh, the vehicle would still be somewhat controlled, like this isn't a free-for-all where people could just pick up the keys and go. These people would still be vetted. We would go through a very similar process to COPP to make sure they were the people that were appropriate to be driving a vehicle like this. We don't want incidents to happen, um, but they wouldn't necessarily be COPP volunteers <coughs> until someday in the future we see that program maybe come together. Uh, and we're hopeful that happens, but so far as yet it hasn't. And the third part which really interests us and is something COPP simply can't do is at times we wish the vehicle to be driven by a security guard. So it would be someone that's trained and licensed by the province of Manitoba as a security guard, and they would be able to operate the vehicle. When it's operated by a security guard, uh, they would be able to do additional things that volunteers from either of the other streams can't. Uh, so for example, if there's issues in a parking lot in a grocery store and someone is not supposed to be there, a security guard could actually stop the vehicle and get out and ask the people to leave and encourage them off the lot, whereas volunteers wouldn't necessarily be doing that because they're not trained and don't really have that same authority as a security guard. So that's kind of the, the version of three options for the vehicle and why 
we think it's such a great idea because it fills those needs for three separate programs. We want to do this because statistics tell us that being visible reduces crime. We've seen that already with the COPP program when they were patrolling. We see crime reduced, at least anecdotally. We see fewer people on the streets when there's a patrol. And it only goes to reason that if it's a much larger vehicle with bigger, bigger decals, it's easier to be seen, we'll have more results. They tell us that crime is reduced 16 to 26 percent when there's visible patrolling in a community. Uh, so certainly that's something we're wanting to reduce. But outside of the crime, we need to increase that safety feeling for people. Uh, we've asked a lot of people, we've done it in some surveying with folks and asked, you know, do you feel less safe if you see a security guard in a store or more safe? And I think sometimes you think, well, a security guard will make you think, like, oh, this is a bad part of town. But most people are saying that they actually prefer that. They feel safer when they know that somebody's around looking around. So that's kind of where we're going with this vehicle. Our goal for the vehicle is to have a patrolling most of the time. Uh, certainly, we wouldn't be opposed to patrolling most hours of the day. Not all of those hours would be with the security professional because it's cost prohibitive, but certainly some would be. Um, this is part of our longer term goals for the community in the short term as well. Longer term, we hope to not be doing this. We're hoping the crime problem is solved in a couple of years and uh, these issues go away. But in the short term, we need to do something. Swan River has looked a little bit at the community safety officer program and the province is making legislative changes to help that but those changes aren't done yet. And they probably won't be done until later this year, and it could be next year before that program is being rolled out. I think very likely a program is what we're proposing could certainly morph into being a community safety officer program in time, and we would see this sunset, and perhaps the town would take over with CSOs later on, um, which would be great by us. But this gives us an opportunity to do something in the next few weeks, because summer is coming, and. We need to make changes here. We need some visible changes. We have applied for as chamber and been funded for a two-way radio system, uh, which will be used in this patrol vehicle, used with businesses. And should we receive funding at some point for the video system, would certainly be used there as well, which would allow video operators and the surveillance system to contact people in the patrol vehicle. I want to be clear, we're not suggesting we're replacing the RCMP here. That isn't the goal. The goal is to have extra eyes and ears extra people out there. So for example, someone in the video surveillance system sees a group of five people walking down a back alley at night and the patrol vehicle is out, the vehicle can simply drive by to see what's happening. We're not suggesting they'd stop, they wouldn't arrest the people, they're not the RCMP. But they certainly would drive by, would provide some visual deterrent, and also say, oh gee, they're carrying something they shouldn't be, and call the police for help. So we just need that little bit of extra. Um, in here we talk about finalizing the vetting process for our volunteers. We're just finishing off exactly how that's going to work, but before the vehicle was to hit the streets, Chamber will make sure we have a very robust program, that we have only qualified people driving. Uh, and certainly, um, as we say in here, we, we hope this ends at some point. We don't see this being a fixture for the, ever. We are asking the town to consider contributing the $50,000 that was set aside in reserves for crime prevention. And there's some obvious questions that I'd be asking if I was on that side of the desk. And one of them would be, uh, why spend the money on that instead of something else? And I know certainly there's a proposal out for a GIS section for the RCMP, you know, for about 600000 So the $50,000 would buy you about one quarter of a police officer uh, for that section, or it would buy you a vehicle on the streets for much more time. Uh, certainly, to me, and what I've seen at Chamber and what we've all talked about, our belief is that the better bang for the buck for the first $50,000 is to have a very, very visible presence to start deterrence uh, in our community so that people see this vehicle out there and feel safer. Uh, I suspect Derek has some comments as well. I just want to reiterate the fact that this isn't um, something just happening in our community. I think we talked about this you know, for probably six months now or over a year now that we, that we need that presence of somebody out in the community. I think this is a, a good start. I know, you know, this is one of the one of the reasons I personally went on the Chamber of Commerce is to uh, make sure that as a business owner and to protect the business owners and, and listen to them and this is what they want to see. So I think this is on a, a good start. Like I, I totally agree with Bill. I don't think this is going to be a long term thing. I think this is something that we need to do from now. Um, summer's approaching. And we got to get this vehicle out in the public eye and at least show the people on the street and the businesses that we're not sitting back 
and and uh, and we want we want to be proactive and we want to try to discourage as much as we can. So this is a, uh, very important to us. Um, I think um, you know Bill's done a lot of work here. We've all done a lot of work here. I think this is something I think the town uh, needs to do, and so I I. I I hope that the council agrees with us and, and says that yes, let's let's get this started. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, any questions? To begin with, go ahead, Councilor Bob. Uh, I, I I like the idea that off the start of it. Yes, I think there's we can't do too much. Uh, has there in, been any consideration to make COPP part of this whole community thing, like? through the chamber, COP, so you have one entity running COPP and the community patrol vehicle? So certainly in other communities, COPP is a part of chamber. Okay. Uh, if we look to Winkler, they have a very successful COPP program that's a part of the Winkler Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so that's a model, our chamber, which is certainly uh, entertaining. We've had those discussions with COPP a little bit as well. As if you know, you're welcome to be here. Uh, certainly from our side, the, the chamber is an incorporated entity. Uh, so the liability does not flow to the group members, whereas in COPP right now, the liability flows to their board of directors directly. So if something goes wrong that's not covered by insurance, their directors are liable for it. At the chamber, that's not the case. And even s simple housekeeping things like a bank account. So if you have, you know, the chamber has a bank account, we have somebody that does the accounting. We have certainly extended the invitation of COPP, and we hope they take us up on it. Okay. Uh also, so am I under the understanding that the, the chamber is a valley run chamber of commerce? It's a Swan Valley. Okay, yeah. so would that, some of this patrols, would that be outside the town of Swan River? Right now, the focus is inside the town okay. of Swan River. Um, and certainly, to be fair, might it touch the edge of Swan Valley West on a street in Swan River? Exactly. That's the greater I mean. Swan River area, but I, it's, it's never been discussed as going to Benito. So I guess my next question is like, you're going to have an employee, so who would be going through the chamber to look after workers' compensation, all that, and it would all be included in the thing. And that was, the businesses felt that was important because we didn't want any one business having the employee. Yeah. We wanted the group of us yeah. having somebody that we all look after. So, your comments that this will not go on forever, so would you expect the town of Swan River to supply funding for the next year? I think we would cross that bridge a little bit later on. We'd look to you folks a little bit for that. Our initial goal is to get the vehicle on the road for the summer. Uh, outside of this town, we're also asking businesses to contribute. Uh, and certainly some businesses have indicated that when a security professional is in the vehicle, that's of great value to them. Uh, and so those businesses aren't talking about a $50 contribution. They're talking about a substantial contribution of buying some of that time to pay for that security guard with the idea that when somebody's in their parking lot, the vehicle goes back there and takes care of the problem. <clears throat> There's been some discussion, like in the in previous, some of the businesses that are, don't belong right now to, the, to uh, the chamber have expressed interest in participating in this on their personal level. It either be by providing maybe extra money for for the security to, to yeah. but, but there is businesses in the community that have stepped up and said, hey, if you get this started, they may not join the chamber, but they will definitely help with the program. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Council White. Yeah, two or three. Uh, just to support what you said, what a wonderful concept. I was with a local business guy, young guy, tough guy. He says, he's had customers, you see them walk up to his door and go away. Good customer says, what happened? He says, there were some other rascals standing out and we were afraid to go in. So that's a real fear in our community. It's something, I don't know how you measure it, it's, but it's there, it's very tangible. Uh, I like the idea of the vehicle for sure. Uh, private cars aren't bad either because they're not marked and, they, and there's a different reaction. I certainly encourage uh, your, your talks to continue with COPP and your team. Uh, the security officer, just a little ambivalent there, uh, are you saying the business community will pay that person's salary? So there is a portion of this $20,000 that they ask is for the security professional. Uh, we don't have a person hired yet, obviously, because that's a little premature. Mm -hmm. uh, the feeling of budgeting is that would buy us between eight and 900 hours mm -hmm. of a security professional. Uh, we would use still the summer but we're looking to businesses, we're hoping to match that with businesses, so we would be doubling that up, so we would be looking at around 15 to 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 hours of a security guard mobile in the community. And the hours would be hours of need, which I'm speculating is somewhere between midnight and five in the morning. 
Yes and no. Yeah, I um, hear you. Some of it is also daytime. Yeah, you know, we've the grab and run is. Well, we have five people standing in a, a parking lot between the grocery carts and the business. And to go in there with a cart is to be asked for money. And to come up with groceries is to wonder if something, something's going to be stolen. You know, we've certainly heard from people that are concerned when they walk out of a store with a cart full of groceries, <coughs> will something be taken? And even I've had the experience, some of my parents have had the experience that, you know, even just returning the cart, they're asked for the dollar by four people standing there saying, I want that dollar. And, you know, my own wife won't shop at some places anymore because of that. So they simply, they can't do it. And that isn't something the RCMP can solve for us. I wish we had 100 RCMP officers and we could put one in every parking lot. We can't. But having something that's going to slow this down and make people feel safe is so important. Just, just to add to that, uh, Councillor White, the, the Chamber's also discussed the possibility of, of asking the business to help fund this by a month, maybe per month, or by, by quarter, and so forth. So if it takes off and, 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 and we find that, yeah, the security person is working, and, and funding is kind of getting lean on it, then we can go to the businesses as a chamber and say, hey, listen, if we want to continue this, there may be $100 a month or, or, or $100 every two months or $50 a month from the businesses to, to help prolong this. And it wouldn't just have to be the businesses. I could throw in 50 Absolutely. Bucks, for example. Absolutely. My Absolutely. wife is afraid to go shopping yeah. by herself. So we've got you've got four thousand other people who will throw in twenty, thirty, fifty bucks, whatever they feel. Exactly. And that might eradicate the rascals. I think I think I think you know, we all we this started over a year ago and we talked about, you know, we, we as as a community we can't necessarily afford everything that we want. So we're trying to build hybrid systems that will work for our community. You know, we went we've met with the provincial government, we went now with the federal government. And, and what we're trying to do is, is, is basically, as a chamber, is try to help build that hybrid system that's going to work for us. That's why we talked about the camera system after we had the, the, the uh, presentation by the security company uh, over a year ago now, and, and this security and this security card. So we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish is basically, at the end of the day, create a hybrid system that's going to work for us. Hopefully, it becomes more of a pilot project for other communities to say, hey, listen, this worked for Swan. You know, let's, let, maybe we can stretch it out to Doff, and maybe we can stretch it out to Thompson, the Paw, et cetera. So hopefully, we can, we can get this going. Because this, this chamber, like we, we, had, we did get uh, uh, in contact with Parkland Chamber. Parkland Chamber is also, you know, it, uh, wants to work with us. So, so it's something that we can work both ways. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Anyone else? Go ahead. Um, I've got a couple questions here for you guys. Um, can you just flesh out a little bit more on the patrols? Is, is it like a uh, like a hands-off but in-your-face type vehicle that is very visible, like a visual deterrent that they're not going to interact with the individuals or just be as... So anytime it was a volunteer, be it COPP or a chamber volunteer, <coughs> hands-off, mm -hmm. they would stay in the vehicle. They wouldn't be getting out. Um, they'd be reporting if there's something that needs to have the RCMP called, they'd report it. They may follow somebody walking down the street but not being in the vehicle. When it's a trained security guard, we would give them the leeway of what their training allows. So in some cases, they may get out of a vehicle. If, for example, they're at a business and they see somebody walk in that's a known shoplifter, a security guard would be able to go into the building after them. Not necessarily go get them, but walk in and see what's happening. Okay, so that leads me like to your two-way radio uh, system, like would this call, uh, car um, be like responding to, like say, an individual or a business says, I got a group of people here and they're calling, I don't know how you would have that system set up, and then this car comes in and makes its present known, which hopes to disperse these individuals, so that's, is it like you're going to have like a, a mini dispatch center, or... So the initial envisioning of the radios was for the video surveillance. So it was an immediate to kind of work contact. Together. The radios <coughs> also, because they're the way they're licensed, they get around the cell phone restrictions. Mm -hmm. So in a case where you have one person in the vehicle, they can still use the radio, whereas they otherwise would have to stop and park and use a cell phone. Uh, there has been some discussion of how far a security guard would go. When it's volunteers, we know it's limited to driving by. You know, we're not going to put volunteers in a position where they're going to, to get out of the vehicle and do something stupid. Uh, when it's a security guard, certainly if it's one security guard in the vehicle and there's four people, that's not a time to be getting out either. That's a time to be driving by and be in your face, make sure they know somebody's watching. 
Uh, but there might be some times. I don't want to give you the false impression that the security officer may never get out of that vehicle. They may well do that when it's safe to do so. But they're certainly not going to go into a situation where there's a group of five or six people. But will they drive by? Absolutely. Might they honk at them if they have to? But they're not going to go and engage that. To, to give you to give you an example, I would I would say and I would envision this person, this safety person, being able to like I know, uh, what a couple months ago we had. Uh, I've heard of a, a, a time in the parking lot at the Extra Foods where um, these people surrounded a, uh, someone that's putting groceries in the vehicle. That's where I would expect that person to, either uh, somebody in the store um, using the WhatsApp or using the radio to call that security vehicle and they're there right there so that, so that they can discourage this immediately and basically disrupt it. Because <clears throat> okay. I refresh myself today on the, on the new regulation on the community safety officer program and that's it's, it's almost like you're, you're mirroring the, the mini me of the community safety officer program uh, without actually having it so that might be something to here's is this security guard uh, if that training is provided free by the province that it's a two-week training it might be something where mm -hmm. um, instead of just a, I, I'm not totally versed on security guard training what their uh, powers and ability to be when it's not hired by a specific entity for a specific property versus the general uh, location here, but that might be an avenue to investigate or we could potentially go down that route and work with you to get that person sponsored in an upcoming course where they do have a little bit more and the proper training to, to do that. So. My understanding, and I'm not a complete expert of it, is that as the chamber and the security guard, mm -hmm. we can sign an agreement with those businesses that say that we are in charge of looking after their personal yeah, property, based. and then our security guard can do those things. Whereas with a community safety officer, the training I think would be valuable, but a community safety officer, as the program sits right now, mm -hmm. can't respond onto that private property, whereas That's our true. security guard right. can. Okay, but yeah. they are working on legislation. Yes, on currently. Yeah, and we're, we're perfectly happy once that legislation is done for you folks to That's take right. over. Okay. So, and then one more question. Um, so you're presenting to us here, and then you've said you've. Um, I've asked the businesses and stuff like that. Has a similar proposal, like I know we, we all talked the thing that the Valley as a whole needs to solve this problem together, not just one entity. Have you approached the other three municipalities to? We've not yet. Uh, um, is there any plans to? We certainly will be approaching Swan Valley West. Uh, those discussions have gone on. I spoke to Reed Bierman. Uh, he indicated that his municipality would be willing to entertain something. Probably not to the same dollar value. Uh, either, understandable, yeah. But so. um, Minnetonas, I haven't heard too much from them, but I think uh, whether it be at a G8 meeting or individually, I think that pitch will be there. Uh, certainly Swan Valley West has discussed at meetings supporting the Chamber. In general, for something like this, they haven't seen this exact proposal. You're the first council to see this. Yeah, like we have the majority of the skin in the game, but everybody has skin in the game here. So, thank you. Hey, Councilor Bob. So am I under the impression that the public would be able to notify this officer? Is that okay? So there is a, a, a road to go that way? Kind of. Ish. <laughs> we are not replacing the RCMP. Yeah. We don't want to be in a situation where someone's calling us because someone has a gun and they need the RCMP. That call needs to go to the RCMP. Okay, that's what I'm getting yes. at. That you might be overwhelmed with. Yes, I think you'll work. I think you'll find businesses have a way to contact this vehicle. Okay. Yeah. And and some very clear discussion on this is when you call nine one one, and this is when you call us. Yeah. Okay, that's. I just hope, Councilor Bobick, you don't uh, <laughs> say that we're, we're trying to replace the police here. No, no, no. I'm not, <laughs> not, not trying to replace, not trying to we're get not trying to replace the police Let's here. We're make trying this to very clear what you're trying to achieve here. Uh, have you have any other towns or cities that have this in place for an example? Yeah, we haven't been able to find a lot in Canada, certainly in the States. Okay. Uh, this is fairly common. In some places it runs as a COPP program. In other places uh, it's just simply called a community patrol, which isn't really the same as COPP with varying levels of how connected they are. In some places, these folks are wearing almost police officer uniforms. In other places, they're in shirts like me and just volunteers. It varies a lot. It depends on the law of the place, right? So Sorry? It depends on the law of the place. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so and my final question, is there any idea of grants or stuff that could unfold into this? Or, or is there something that the Thomas on ever could be looking towards to grants? I don't know of any specifically on point to this. The radio system we did a grant for and was fully funded through granting. Okay. So that is done and paid for already. 
Um, to the vehicle, this exact thing, I haven't found anything like that. Uh, but certainly, if something was to come up, okay, we would, just, we'd look to it. I think the success of this vehicle as a, as a as a hybrid project, I think, is important for us to monitor and keep track of, so that we can go to the province and say, hey, hey, listen, we might have something here that might work. You know, maybe we can throw some funds towards it, and maybe they can maybe again. I hate to say throw it at the project rep, but but it would be beneficial to us to, to create a hybrid project and, and, and turn it as a, hey, we're trying this in Swan, let's see how this works. If it works, maybe we can get it out to the other communities. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, the one thing when we're talking the security guard, I know, or I've seen the security card course offered, I think through UCN. Have you guys thought to reach out to them? I don't wanna say it's not necessarily practicum hours, but I'm wondering if they could incorporate some uh, learning time with their program there where we could utilize um, guards that are taking that course and get some yeah. free hours that would go a long way to their training and then potentially have them you know as a candidate for the program that's actually I, I, you're right because I mean I remember hearing that they had they were holding the course mm -hmm. I don't know how much interest they got in the course but I know it was a pretty expensive course it's <coughs> now they've, I think, <coughs> we, we do have someone that is trained and is possibly available part-time that was actually trained I think through that course uh, so I, I take your point as a volunteer is good but I think we also have some people that we can we're not going to have to run the course to get someone to drive this there's some opportunities yeah but just extra hours oh, for we sure. get some more hours yeah. in there and pair them up right pair yeah. them with a trained guard and then somebody that's a rookie and mm -hmm. send them up together and then the other thing I was going to say was Go ahead, three. Three. Go ahead. <laughs> I, thought were, I thought you were done. Of course not. Um, is I do also, I can talk to you after, I do have an individual who used to be in corrections that may be interested in assisting uh, with the potential setup of uh, that other system and helping out in a way there. So I'll give you that information after. Good. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> Mr. Paul. In terms Mr. of Paul. provincial granting, we're in contact with Manitoba Justice quite a bit, and they, they are very interested in, in what communities are going to do. Is, is there any sort of stats that are going to be collected in terms of maybe calls or, or something that's what? measurable that we can provide? They'd and, be very interested in that. And not just for that, but also for our... Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Making sure we're doing the right things. Yeah. The, the whole program is going to have to record like a, um, it's going to have to be pretty with a log book. Yeah. You know, time you go out, time that vehicle goes out, time the vehicle goes in. It's got to be done pretty well you know, because obviously we're a corporation that, that, that needs to be done. So so definitely I don't, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to track all the hours it's someone out, yeah. the fuel that's gone into it, who's driving it, where it is yeah. at all times. In our deals with the province, they're, they're basically asking us what can we do in terms of changing legislation or is it creating a grant program and maybe these stats can help do exactly Absolutely. that. Okay, so we need to start to tie it up. I'm sorry. <coughs> it's an important uh, topic for sure. Council White, finally. Uh, I don't know. It's a feel adage of thinking gentlemen that it comes first the chicken or the egg. Like if, if, you, if the car is present, I can see UCN saying, hey, we want to get in with you guys. Because you have, you have an employer you know, who will hire the students taking our course. So if you have the car, the students are more likely to take the course. So hypothetically, both entities would benefit. So I'd be fully, uh, whomever, because they just run hand in hand. Thank you. Council Member. Uh, well, just to speak from uh, the head of a COPP, the Manitoba program is incorporated, so we are under that umbrella and part of the things that need to be worked out is just when it's all into play. Citizens on Patrol is to the community um, and the way some of this is playing out is it looks like it might have more of a focus specifically to the business and the business district and in which case that's where we need to see whether it's a fit, it, it's, because uh, we cannot dedicate 100% of our time and our volunteer hours literally to just the, the downtown area and or 
businesses. We do patrols that include into the community and have kind of that equal balance of time and commitment to the whole community. So that's kind of where some of the stuff plays out and that's part of the reason why they're looking for more focus. This way they can have more focus towards specifically the businesses if that's what they want. Um, but it's not that COPP is not interested, but as an incorporated program, we do have some constitutions and and, oh, and we'll let the chamber and the COPP kind yeah. of iron those mm -hmm. things out, Councilor Boychuk. Well, I was just <coughs> saying the large capital granting was extended by a week, and I want to say that a small capital project, I don't know if it would fit under that, was it also extended by a week? I'm just trying to find that out for 100% yeah, sure. Culture and arts, culture, and, arts, culture and, and sport. sport, but I just didn't know if there's something... Chasing criminals might seem like sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be an art. <laughs> All right. No, uh, good. Uh, you have another question? I do. Okay. Uh, with all due respect to you, I, I didn't hear you say you were just doing the business community. I heard you're doing the periphery, you're doing the town and the business community. And to me, the business community is the community because I shop in the business community. So I, I don't smell a I didn't never even sense that it's going to be staying on Main Street doing business. I appreciate your comment. And just, just to respond to that just for a second, you know, our goal is this vehicle never stops moving. And so if the CLPP can find use in this vehicle in whatever hours they can use it for, if it's not in the downtown, that's fine. Let's have this thing everywhere. Let's have it be seen, right? The more this is on the street, the more we win. Perfect. Good work, guys. You know, it's good to see the chamber back uh, alive and, and well and, uh, and working on this important item. You know, we've been talking about it with the business group and, and chamber now for more than a year. And, uh, and it's good to see some ideas coming to, together to formulate to kind of target the issues at hand and let the bigger things happen as, as they happen. So <clears throat> with that, any final words from you guys at all? or? I don't, I don't have any words. No, I, we, we thank you for the opportunity to present. Absolutely. We like the questions because always it's so much easier just to answer a person. Yeah. So. so council will have a chance to uh, chat about this at our next call meeting, which is next Tuesday, and then we'll get back to you. Thank you much. All right. Have a great evening. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> six, 6.1. Resulted letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated April the 12th, 2023, regarding uh, the 2022 PL, PILT recon reconciliation grant be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. <clears throat> Discussion, and for everyone, the uh, payment in lieu of taxes is what. P-I-L-T stands for. Okay. Uh, go ahead. And what exactly is that for? Um, what is it pertaining to? It's the government. It's the government paying back for the municipality for the services that they use for the properties they own within town. Okay. So you'll see at the bottom there, there's the actual amount that, uh, what the amount of the grant was. Yeah, no, I did see that. I just wasn't clear on what it's about like I understood the payment in lieu of taxes but for what but thank you okay for the discussion all in favor scary 6.2 result of the building and demolition permits 723 and 823 with a total estimated value of $107,000 be received moved by Councillor Powell seconded by Councillor Medwood Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.1. <clears throat> Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Midwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? We have Mr. Harvey on video tonight. Councilor Medwood. And my question is, uh, Director Harvey, are you able to give us a current flood status or update <laughs> and what our standing is? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Mr. Harvey, not Mr. Harvey. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, so they lost a uh, lot of outlook. It uh, was low risk of flooding. Um, there, however, it did mention ice jams. We did have on uh, Wednesday night uh, an ice jam formed uh, behind the CN bridge. And uh, so I was out checking that because uh, I got a call just to see if sandbags were needed and checking in with residents and uh, with a contractor. And uh, the residents that I talked to weren't too concerned yet because it uh, formed fairly regularly there. And then as I was talking to them, it let go. And uh, since then, we've had three or four ice flows move through town, but nothing's... Uh, jammed up kind of thing so we're just kind of continually keeping an eye on it but the other than the ice jams the flood risk is low according to the province thank you yeah mr hardy thank you for actually acting on that as quick as you did that evening and uh, i'm watching for that uh, uh, that uh, ice jam so it was good to see that it disappeared there shortly afterwards but thanks for your work on that uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, Mr. Harvey, I see in your report under transportation that you're meeting with the street sweeping equipment vendor. Um, can you enlighten us on what that is? Because I don't recall any conversation in our budget process on anything to deal with the street sweeper. So is that parts or something happening there? Uh, no, that's uh, on the list for next year. Uh, he was just in town, uh, so we just had an impromptu meeting, um, but it's not for this budget. Good. I can put my blood pressure down now. <laughs> yeah. For the discussion? There was, there was some repairs to the street sweeper, but it's uh, running mm -hmm. now. There was wire that was uh, corroded, giving us issues, but uh, our mechanic got it fixed. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, just more or less, just to state some information that uh, has been brought forward that some of the equipment over the winter here has caused some damage to boulevards, uh, grass near the sidewalks and stuff and just was speaking with Director Harvey that dude, we can inform the public that this will be looked after as time warrants it so they have been if there's people that have issues with what some of the equipment has done this year uh, just contact the town and we'll be making a list and uh, it will be repaired, so it's not that we're leaving it. So just uh, and, it, and, and just to further elaborate on that, uh, it'll be after we do the boulevard sweeping, just so we don't landscape it and then go along with the boulevard sweeper and wreck the landscaping. Um, so we'll do the boulevard sweeping and then we'll do the landscaping. But yeah, we've talked to a few people, but uh, I just mentioned that uh, Councillor Bobic is the head of the transportation committee. Just uh, so that and so that council can be aware uh if anyone calls uh you can let us know the exact address but the foreman has a list already uh but unfortunately it was a few spots around town um where just because the amount of snow at the start of the year either the loader the grader or the snow blower caught some turf so we have some repairs to do thank you thank you for the discussion all in favor it's carried. <clears throat> 7.2, the report 7.3, um, council reports. Councilor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. I've uh, attended a call meeting last week. We had a watershed meeting last week and have another watershed meeting this Thursday. We have a meeting tomorrow at uh, mm -hmm. noon to discuss the lagoon. Uh, just to uh, maybe give everybody a heads up i'm thinking maybe of calling another meeting of public works and stuff and i'll talk to director harvey tomorrow just prior to budget here we'll go over some of the equipment lists it's in the future like uh, deputy mayor was talking morio was talking about so we'll maybe see how everybody's time frame works but i'm thinking next week would probably be right up the alley but we'll see how i think we'll leave it to Director Harvey to call it just so he knows when the guys because I'd appreciate uh, our foreman and uh, our sub foreman to be here at the same time. So that will be coming up. Uh, just wondering 
uh, on the water and sewer job that's proposed this year. First Street North, am I correct? I believe so. Okay. So in the time frame now, so does this centennial. have to wait, pardon me? I think it's centennial, is it not? Yeah. <coughs> it's up there. Anyway, that's it. Sorry, I was muted there. It is centennial. Okay, okay. It just uh, my question is, does does it have to wait for you to start ordering your pieces to do this job and it's getting touch with contractors for our budget to be set? Yes, either that or a resolution has to be passed allowing him to expend those funds. <clears throat> so it, if, he, if he gets no resolution, he must wait till the financial plan is finished. Okay, <coughs> just to make council aware of that. So it, it, sometimes it's with the availability of parts and pieces right now, I think the sooner we get on it, the better. So I guess with the meeting that we'll have next week, we'll, we'll go over that a little bit more and be able to report back to council which way that needs to happen. So. Okay. Uh, I have one other officer, but I'll speak to it. I see it's coming to our resolution, so I'll leave it at that. So, thank you. Good. Councilor Medwood. Um, well, it's been a full week since our last regular council meeting, and yet I feel like I've had just as many meetings as the last one. Um, <laughs> I attended the ARMED session. Um, it probably could benefit as they continue on with better promotion. Um, there's been a little chat between some of the councillors, but the, knowing exactly what's on their agenda so we can adequately promote it to the community, to our, our chamber, our businesses. So a lot of valid information, but if you don't have the right people at the table to hear that information, then it's not really getting where it needs to be, maybe not necessarily the greatest benefit to our valley as it, the pet, as it has the potential to be. Uh, it did give me the opportunity to do some networking with the Dauphin Chamber as well as the World Trade Center Winnipeg for some uh, chamber opportunities there. Uh, I did have a chamber meeting as well this last week. There was the meeting with uh, MP Mazur and the town hall. Uh, my one takeaway from there that I had for immediate things that the community can be doing is those letters to the Minister of Justice, to uh, Mazur himself, as well as Caputo and Brock, and um, I think we also, I think they had also mentioned including um, like the NDP and whatnot. But getting those letters out that basically give the stories, the effect that the crime and the situation is having on the people, so that those voices can be heard, and then also. Uh, MP Mazur can then be kind of saying, hey, what's being done about this? And he's got that letter there. So that was the biggest one um, for the people in the community who keep saying, like, what's being done and what can we do? Well, here's one of more of those things where here's how you can be proactive. Uh, Swan Valley Animal Protection League had their fundraiser dinner on the weekend. I attended that. It had a good turnout. Uh, actually, one of our office staff won the 50-50, uh, so uh, she had a good night, I'm sure, with knowing she's uh, a little bit richer there. I uh, had a services for seniors meeting today. I was also at the local emergency response group meeting today. I'm looking forward to the tabletop exercise and kind of getting some experience with uh, the emergency um, measures or EMO, whatever, yeah. I'm looking forward to the tabletop exercise so I can really wrap my head around what all I'm responsible for. Um, and yeah, my next week is full of meetings as well. Good. <clears throat> That's everything? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Boycha. Zigzagging today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, since last Tuesday, I wasn't able to do the ARMA during the day. I took part in the evening events. Then we had a meeting with... Uh, Charlene from Armed and Jillian McGrath from uh, Immigrant Services, t along with Councillor Medwitt and Deputy Mayor Morio, to discuss and pursue an immigration strategy for the Valley. It went really well. There's some things that are being looked into, and uh, we're waiting on some information from um, uh, Charlene. 
to kind of pursue that further. On April 13th, I attended a build design meeting with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, um, and uh, it went really well. A lot of very smart people sitting around that table. It was uh, nice to hear the thoughts and uh, ideas that were flowing there. Um, I have also completed the Arts and Culture and Sport and Community Large Capital Grants and uh, CAO Pools reviewing that. I haven't had any critiques, so I'm kind of worried about it. But uh, anyhow, um, we'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, finalizing the collection of letters for support on that matter, too. We've got a lot in, and we're getting a lot more. Tomorrow, um, Councillor Bobick and Medwid and I had uh, Director Harvey have a meeting with Ian Fluids to discuss options for the lagoon. And I also put forward to set up a follow-up meeting with Municipality Swan Valley West to finalize or go over the uh, few outstanding questions for that fire board agreement that you're working on, Deputy Mayor. So I know they're looking forward to meeting. And then we also need to, we spoke about, set up a MOE with uh, the RCMP, I believe, coming up. And another thing that had come to my attention is maybe just setting up another meeting with the Ironman and Thomas Bozeman, not for particularly anything specific, but just have a meeting and see if there's anything that uh, arises from it or where everybody's at since the last one. And then I'm out for a little bit after Friday, so I'll be zooming in probably for a week or so, I'm guessing. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Councilor White. Uh, April 12th, we had the uh, Urban Forest Committee, and I can say that uh, we had a good turnout. I think it doesn't 15, and there's another eight or 10 lists that wanted to attend. And uh, the new executive consisting of uh, Darby Bronconier will be the new president, and Corbin Proctor will be the vice president. And they're young and they're enthusiastic. And uh, once I get them to the mayor, your worship, I'm going to uh, give you a list of those three, four decade long serving members of the Urban Forest Committee who are stepping back because they're tired and uh, hopefully we'll get a letter from our office from the council thanking them for the work they've done. Then on the 13th I went to a UCN uh, uh, meeting, I sit on an advisory board and uh, my main goal that day was to talk about the LPN to BN bridging again and I told them uh, I appreciate so much what UCN does. UCN is a huge player in our town and we couldn't do it without them. We need one another. But in two years I have not got one formal letter, any letter, email or otherwise, saying why we can or we cannot do bridging LPN to BN and it disappoints me. The only letter I have got is from Minister Reyes, the Minister of Immigration, who has said keep it up, I like what you guys are trying to do. Then on the 13th, I had lunch with uh, our two guest MPs doing the crime seminar, and we talked about crime in our community. And the thing you can't quantify, I alluded to it earlier, the fear. Like, uh, how many people are afraid, how many aren't? We can tell you how many have been broken into, how many have been stolen from, but they can't, so they, uh, they seem to be appreciative. And then the Veterans Hall meeting in the evening, and I, I uh, applaud uh, Councillor uh, Karina here. Uh, you got to report everything. Uh, victim impact statements jumped out at me too, how important they were. And the uh, right to minister, I don't know if we say it enough because I don't think people listen to that. That's important. If the federal minister, specifically the federal, you can write to uh, all the ministers you wish, but that person is in charge of the crime. Then today uh, we attended that EMO meeting again, and I appreciate that our council, led by you, uh, CEO Poole, is preparing before the, the happening. And it's been a while coming, but it's here. And uh, the, the flood is going to be the tabletop exercise in the afternoon. I'm assuming all the council will be invited to that because, well, we can invite them. They don't have to come, I guess. And preparing, what do you need to do? Uh, good discussions about potentials. And for those of you who are on the committee and uh, in the community, the other on the committee, there are medical team, our medical professional recruiting, retaining team meets tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I'm assuming that's Thursday, rather. It's Wednesday. Go on, you're on a Wednesday? Are you the chair today? Okay. It's on Thursday, okay. Thursday, not tomorrow. I <coughs> spotted that. And I'm assuming the weather won't be all that bad. But if you need a ride, I'll come and pick you up. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy <coughs> Mayor Morgan. Um, 
Most of the stuff's been mentioned already, but uh, on the 12th was the RMED economic development uh, uh, session both during the day and the evening, um, uh, as Councilor Menwood had mentioned. Uh, a lot of good information there, valuable information to uh, chambers, communities, and entrepreneurs, but uh, they sorely got to work on their communication methods and reaching out to people and getting the appropriate numbers and people at those sessions to gather that information. Um, I understand they are a, a new organization or wing of the, the provincial government, but uh, they got to work on that. So, um, April 13th, uh, we had a morning meeting with uh, MP Mazur and Caputo, and we had some, uh, some good fruitful discussion there, um, along with the town hall uh, meeting in the evening. Um, following up on that, um, I would suggest, uh, Your Worship, that uh, the town send out a formal invitation both to the Provincial Minister of Justice and the Federal Minister of Justice to come to town halls in Swan River and present and listen to the community here and um, hear firsthand and not just give us Zoom lip service like we've been getting for the last couple of years from those two individuals. And I also further suggest that uh, we have a, a, a town hall question answer period with uh, our local RCMP and not only the local RCMP but their superiors, the, the uh, regional uh, commanders and the commanders from D Division in Winnipeg that uh, our staff sergeant and our officers have to answer to so that uh, they can come here and potentially uh, say where uh, things are going and some of the challenges that they're having and whatnot so that uh, it allows our people to, uh, uh, residents I should say, um, to come forward and paint that picture for all parties that are part of this whole problem. So. And then today I had the local emergency response uh, group uh, little presentation and going forward. And I also have a number of questions that so I don't know if I should answer them, ask them now or to Mr. Poole or save them for uh, in camera for uh, pertaining to the Conrad Apartments and our infamous White House. Put them out there. Okay, put them out. Um, okay, so as it relates to the Conrad Apartments, um, where are we in the process of communicating uh, with the owner uh, that the town is considering and looking at proceeding with the demolition of that building? And has there any been responses? Myself and Chief Fedorchuk <coughs> had a discussion today. Did you want to take that one, Chief Fedorchuk? Yeah, um, so currently, um, as per the last call meeting, we are just waiting for a resolution or direction, official direction from Council uh, to continue with uh, the process uh, towards demolition. Uh, we have not got that as of yet. Um, as far as obtaining quotes and that type of stuff, uh, because of the dollar value, it would have to be uh, advertised, uh, possibly on Mercs. And for us to do that, we would need a formal resolution to continue. Okay, um, so you've basically, in that, you basically answered the, the majority of my questions on that one. Um, but I'm quite fully prepared later on in the meeting uh, with the support of council to provide that resolution should uh, we want to proceed with that to keep that ball rolling instead of being, uh, if that's what's the next step required to move that along. Okay. And then as it uh, relates to um, the address at 124 7th Avenue South, um, I understand uh, we've uh, reached out and communicated with the building owner to uh, request permission to uh, have the fire chief and the bylaw uh, officer and that enter the property um, to do um, some inspections as it relates to some of the bylaw we have here and we reached out in early March or mid-March for that and we have yet to hear back. Um, did we just send a letter out and it's been crickets or are we pressuring and following up with the building owner um, to make this happen? Thank you. So we've, we've sent out a letter. Um, the building owner did contact our bylaw officer quickly, uh, wanting where to send his reply, which was all put in the letter. Uh, we had heard nothing back. So today I obtained an email that we found 
uh, and I sent the email out hoping electronically would be a little bit quicker in the system than waiting for Canada Post. Okay, thank you. So I understand that we are, as of today, reached out again to uh, obtain that permission to enter that property to do inspections for uh, basically the obvious violations that we can see from the street. In and addition, we, we contacted uh, the RCMP, just if they do have to enter that host, that, that they let us know and we can contact uh, Public Health. Okay. Just so, because they don't... They don't require that notice. Yeah, that they can be there when they're there. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Good, thank you. <clears throat> Council Powell. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we attended the cow meeting. Um, I've also attended quite a few library meetings. We have a couple more coming up this week, so that'll be coming forth. Um, we met with uh, MP Mazur and Caputo, and that was really great to have that conversation with them. Um, our Rock Rise meeting this week was postponed, but we hope to have um, some talks next week regarding that, and there'll be some some uh, discussion on trade shows for Thompson and Plum Plum coming up. And Maybe some participation. Uh, Council Boyce, I spent some time working on that on a grant. Um, I just like to commend her on all the time that she's put into this on her own. Um, and along with that, like the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, who's done a lot of work, and the committees that are put together that are working very well together. Uh, my apologies <coughs> to interagency for not being available. We were snowbound that day. Um, I was filled in with that and will attend the next meeting. Uh, a huge congrats to our Swan Valley St. Peter's, Barry and his coaching staff for going as far as they did. Um, it was amazing to see our arena as packed as it was and with all the people that were, were there for that and, and just a great big hats off to them for going as far as they did. And Everything is May 5th is uh, National Red Dress Day. It's also known as a day of awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and, and to serve fear to people. Uh, there's a plan in the works for a walk for this, and it's open to all, so I would encourage everybody to attend that. There'll be lots of lots of information in regards to what this day entails to there, so that's it. Um, Good, thank you. Not much more for me as what was, was already said, but <clears throat> just some comments about MP Mazer and Caputo and you know, Mr. Caputo, as we all had a chance to meet and hear him speak and, and, and how he truly believes that there has to be some changes to the justice system and, and he kind of laid it out there for, I don't know, about 300 people that were there that night. I don't know what the actual number was, but pretty close to that. And they kind of laid it out and it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work. And, and you know we hear from the chamber what they're you know working on. Those are the kind of the short term kind of things, but they're going to be working on some of the long term stuff. It was mentioned about the letters that go out to the ministers and all that. I was thinking that we should almost have maybe on our web page something for uh, people to kind of go to and, and 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 maybe addresses or or email addresses to the the. the Federal uh, Justice Minister, the Safety Minister, the Prime Minister, even the opposition uh, uh, leaders uh, of the federal governments and or in, in Ottawa, and also to our own uh, governments as well, anyone else where we can you know bring this uh, awareness to, and it'll also then maybe help the <coughs> uh, to know where they can send these letters. Because I've actually had people ask me, who do I send these letters to? Because they talked about it that night. So I think it's probably not a bad idea to maybe have something on our on our website. Um, I also had a meeting uh, yesterday with Chief Janai. We try to get together at least maybe once every month and a half, but we had a very good chat yesterday and uh, some things that he would like to work with us uh, as a community, uh, both our, our communities, I should say, and uh, the growing um, investments in TLEs as well. So, um, you know, he's in the, in the middle of an election right now, so he said that we'll talk after May the 2nd, so we'll see uh, where that goes, but I wish all the three candidates the best of luck, and we'll work with whoever uh, becomes uh, chief of Sapatoyak. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> to answer some of the questions that 
uh, Deputy Mayor Morio mentioned about having a town hall with the RCMP. Mr. Um, uh, Monroe, he had said that he would be more than happy to have uh, that uh, at some point in time. So I think we need to maybe uh, call him in and have a meeting with him and maybe have a pre-discussion about the, the looks of that. But, you know, it's expanding it to the, uh, the other, if it's D Division or some of his superiors. I don't mind the idea of that, and maybe it would be helpful. After the town hall last week, I actually had some people from the uh, from the community come to me and say, like, why wasn't the RCMP here? But it wasn't, and I explained to them, it really wasn't the RCMP meeting. It was the, the MPs that really wanted to have that. So um, perhaps maybe at some point in time we can do that, but we'll talk to our staff sergeant about that. Um, and to the other ministers, uh, or the uh, federal and provincial ministers, I'm waiting for Mr. Quinn for some discussion with the federal justice minister, and that's still uh, in the works. It's take, well, we've been talking about this for almost two months already. We know what uh, the minister's response to my letter was. It wasn't very good, but um, I'll kind of push Mr. Ferris again tomorrow and see what's going on with that. So definitely it's not a bad idea. Would they respond the same way as Mr. Caputo and, and Mr. Mazer? Not sure, but you know, at least we can try. And uh, I'm not gonna repeat anybody else said. So, uh, oh, Stan Peters, absolutely. That was, that was awesome, too bad those, those guys, they worked pretty hard for that uh, series and it was good to see all those people in the arena, uh, all those games. So yeah, lots of, a lot of energy that was in that building last night, and if they would have scored uh, to tie it up, it, the place would have exploded, and we were just anticipating that right to the very, very end. So anyway, good luck to them and, and all the young guys, the 20-year-olds that will be leaving our community now too. Um, so moving on, I guess uh, Mr. Poole has anything to add, then we'll take that. Uh, yeah, just for myself, we have a rec director interview scheduled for April 20th ending weather, hopefully they are on time. I uh, attended the first local emergency response meeting this afternoon. I thought that went pretty well. Uh, so council knows I'll, I'll be with KGS test labs in the pool for the 26th and the 27th uh, for their metallurgic study. I'm hoping it will take both days. And I'll be attending the MMA conference uh, May 1st to 3rd in Winnipeg, uh, where all CAOs will Get together. Uh, for council, just a reminder that June district resolutions are due June 1st, so we'll be sending out a, an email with a couple <coughs> examples for council uh, if we want to submit those <coughs> to the AMM. Uh, the AMM executive meeting is the 21st this Friday at 2 p.m., so whoever can make that. Uh, we will have something prepared for the councillors who attend, and the strategic planning session is next Tuesday, April 25th. So just be prepared for that. That's all that I have. Okay, I actually forgot to mention that the, the, uh, the meeting with the, uh, the executive on Friday. I will not be here. I may come in by Zoom, but I'll be out of town that day. Councillor Midman? Um, can you just repeat that because it's just registered in my head, and I don't think I have it in my calendar. So you can just repeat. That's the AMM. Yeah, there's a meeting with the AMM Executive Committee. That's the president and the two vice presidents, where they 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 go around and discuss with all municipalities common issues. And uh, if we, if we do have some resolutions, we we should let them know then that we are going to present them on June first. And, and when is that meeting? This Friday at 2 p.m. This Friday at yeah. the 21st? Yeah. So oh, I might be on my way or in Dauphin already by then. I may or may not be able to attend. Okay. But it's here. Yes. Okay. If I'm yeah. here, it's, I'm by, it's here. by Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Right. I just forgot to uh, compliment uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, the last little while I've been getting a few nudges from the medical world relative to uh, nurses and doctors, speech pathologists, how much their rooms cost. And it's so nice to download it onto you, sir. And uh, you've been uh, following up on it, and I appreciate that so much. You've been communicating with uh, Minister, Mr. Schoenbert, the CEO, and as, uh, we have a, a South African nurse communicating with us right now from South Africa, moving here to work with uh, John Deere and looking for nurse spots. So uh, 
David has in fact uh, looked in to try to facilitate that process and, and others and uh, thank you for that, sir. Oh wow, we're going to go all the way around again or what? Well, just go ahead. That, thank you, Bo, dear. <laughs> uh, I would just like to make a comment that over the last week there was a dangerous dog that issue that was dealt with by our file officer and the, our fire chief. Uh, hats off to him, it was very professionally <coughs> done, well looked after. I, it's a very not a very pleasant job, and it was very, I, I can't say enough how professionally it was done, so thanks to those two people. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, then we shall move on. So, uh, 8, 8.1, resolve the request from Charlotte and Greg Sauter, representing National Red Dress Day Committee, to use the Legion Park on May the 5th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. to host a walk in the park event open to the public to promote awareness and education for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medford? Just a question in general with regards to requests for access to the public parks. Do, do we take any like reservation or requests or like if somebody wants to go and organize something there and they didn't actually, you know, come to council first, is there anything wrong with that? I'm, I'm just Typically, it's something like this that they would want to, yeah. right, just yeah. so that there's awareness at, at the same time. But also, then you don't have overlap. You may have something else going on there too. So there's Well, that's why requests. I'm kind of asking, like, do we actually have a process that people kind of are supposed to or should be coming to the town to say, hey, I'd like to do this little thing, um, yes. you know, can I use the park? And it's not necessarily that it's not closed to the public, so to speak, but it might not be something that they're personally going to be paying for advertising so the entire community yeah. knows yeah. about it. Just so that we, everybody, yeah, there is a process and, 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 and people apply. Uh, I remember last year, I think we had the Pride and then there's a baseball tournament at the same time. So we just kind of make sure that everything is working together. And is that something that's easily accessible and known on our website that people should be? Uh, I, I, we, we could put it on our website. Most people ask. So it, 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 they always ask the Recreation Department. And it's up to their discretion if someone wants to have a little birthday party where they're skipping and it's not going to be a big deal. But if there's going to be a wedding there with alcohol, we're going to need to know and they need to get the pro proper licenses and everything that comes along with that. With this, it's really about getting it out, getting the word out. Yeah, so th does this really need council approval? No, but it's it's getting the word out to the public who watch this meeting to attend this and Great. gain support. Yeah, no, that I understand and I'm on board with it. It's just, it brought the question of, is this typical and is there a formal process in general. Not a formal. Okay. No. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Let's carry. 8.2. Result of the town of Swan River donate the use of tables and chairs to the Swan Valley Community Center for the April 22nd and 2023 fundraising event finding Waldo. I think it's called Where's Waldo? Um, community Center is the Curling Club, for those who don't know. Uh, moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Uh, I will be supporting this resolution, but at the same time, I'd like to see in the near future that when we do do donate chairs and tables to different community groups for the use, that there is a fund, a price put on it, so that if there is a possibility of other people paying a share of it that those fundraisers will have a price on what to how to split it up. Fair enough. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Eight point three. Result of the job description for the recreation director position be a approved. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor uh, Bobic. Boychuk. Discussion. 
Uh, just one quick question, but um, did CAO's report not just indicate we're about to do interviews? <laughs> I'm just wondering about the timing of the advertisement in relation to already securing some interview candidates. Uh, yeah, I, I needed changes to the description and I can't change it without council's approval and I will give the candidates this new description prior to the interview. Okay. Just to clarify that. Okay. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, I see as part of the qualifications that a recognized degree in recreation management is preferred. Um, is there like... A, is there a, like different courses or is that a specific course? That, like, it's part of a, it, it's like, it's I guess I, I, like I really a, don't know the intricate details. I know you can take it in kinesiology and you yeah. take rec management as a. Right, so there's different options. Like there's not all one path, one specific course. It can be a combination of what that gets you that same angle with yes. the, the competencies and the education that's required that we're looking yes. for. So it's not just a finite, you have a license and right. not have a license. It's yes, and, and years ago we, we tried to find you know just some workshops that, that could be taken, but they're, they're just not strong enough to, okay. to be considered, okay. I guess, no, to be honest. I just know that there's, yeah. it's a sneaky path to different rec director positions and yeah. what their trainings are. So, okay. Council White. Uh, it's wonderful. I mean, my, my, uh, as I echoed earlier, it talks about all the administration organizing all those things, and, and somewhere in there, two or three clauses, it says maintenance. And, and that's a concern of mine. Do we have, a, let's say we hire a person who's got eight out of ten, which can happen, but doesn't have a strong maintenance perspective. Do we have people in our system right now that can look after the pool and the arena? Yes. The end of discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Council Uh Well, looking at the qualifications list, that kind of piggybacks on that because I don't see anything under the qualifications that indicate we're looking for somebody that has maintenance experience and or... We're not. We need an administrator. So the, the maintenance would be nice. It'd be an added plus if they run those facilities and mechanics. That would be an absolute... And it'd be, it would be an asset but we do have positions in the rec department that deal directly with maintenance and running the maintenance of those facilities. We need an administrator first. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Whereas the Swan Valley Medical Services Committee has committed one million dollars towards the addition of a CT scanner diagnostic service at the Swan Valley Health Care, the Health Care Center, <clears throat> Health Center, and whereas all four municipalities must enter into a memorandum of understanding with Prairie Mountain Health for the capital project to proceed. Therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Lance Jacobson be authorized to sign the memorandum of understanding with Prairie Mountain Health. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Manning. On the last page, I think it's the last page. Yes, in the Schedule 1, it has, uh, in the chart, it has data payment is required by amount of payment and total contribution to date. Is it meant to be $1 million in both boxes for total contribution to date because the amount of payment is only 500000 in the first one and 500000 in the second one, but yet we have a total contribution of $1 million in both those boxes. Yeah, that, that is a typo. It should be $1 million total. Uh, another good question Council should know that's been brought up by a municipal partner is the September 30th deadline. Mm -hmm. So what's been discussed is uh, to, to change this agreement, which would require this to be tabled, uh, again to to have uh, I can't remember the term the deposit the it's a conditional deposit basically that we create that that um, it acknowledges two deals that that PMHCs that we actually have the funds because they are questioning that 
Uh, and it doesn't allow the release of the funds until our conditions are met. So condition might be CT Probably scanner enough. is installed completely and operational. Both. So once that happens, funds are released. So just things like that. So really, really good question that was brought up. Uh, I guess I do, I do recommend that this be tabled because I think that needs to be addressed. Okay. Uh, Councillor Powell, oh. you're mm -hmm. moving it to be tabled, or? Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. oh, okay. I can. I can. Okay. Okay. okay, so yeah. Councillor White is moving and seconded by Councillor Medwood. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Did you have a question? No, I got a comment. Uh, PMH board is meeting tomorrow, so I can bring that directly forward verbally tomorrow. So if you want to get me a yeah. cheat sheet speaking note on that, okay. I can get that wheels in motion tomorrow afternoon. Perfect. Okay, where the heck was I here? 8.5. Resolved that the Town of Spawn River donate the use of the arena's parking lot and lobby to the RCMP on June the 7th, 2023. Uh, with a rain delay or de date of June the 14th, 2023, for the Emergency Service Day event. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Um, similar to the previous one for the park, do we have a formal request or process for the parking lot area in particular, which is kind of open to the public? Again, it's things get everything's directed to the recreation department, and it is the discretion of that department to get council's approval. Or, like, if, it, if it's something like this, we believe it should be out to the public. But again, it's at the discretion of the. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just kind of being new councillor and all wondering if this is typical and we might be seeing more of them, or if this is just an oddball. In the summer, you'll see more, obviously. You know, depending on the year, I guess. Usually, if there's an entity doing a, a public event, we will bring it to council's attention. If it, you know, if it involves a road closure, it must have council's attention. Uh, but yeah, we just we try and keep council a aware of what's happening on the property that you guys, you know, council is in control of. But like I say, if it's just it's something very small, 15 minute thing, can we take some pictures in front? You know, we just let them. Yeah. Let it happen. Perfect. Thank you. Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, just looking at here, we have a invoice here, so I imagine that's the amount of what the cost of that would be. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I guess my comments before about putting a price to the resolutions on the donations would be that that would be a, a number that would be to the resolution. Okay. Okay, just for further mm -hmm. information. Yeah. Okay. okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.6. Result of the, the, that the abuse and molestation policy be approved. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? I'm not 100% clear when I read through this. Is this meant to be an internal policy or does this have impact to internal <coughs> and or external? This is a requirement from our insurance company. We are required to have this policy in order to get insurance from them. So that is why the AMN is involved. Uh, they are, they provide the insurance, the third party insurance. Uh, this is just simply a requirement that the town and every other municipality that gets insurance through the AMM uh, must pass. And I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but again, I'm still not clear. Are we, is this essentially staff and or counselors coming to report a incident and or observation or disclosure? Or is this potentially the public coming in 
to voice that's where I'm not really clear. Town policy only deals with the town of Swan River. So we, it's for the town of Swan River as an organization, this policy. Okay, because there's, I think it is reporting in section five, but it references parents being um, informed or whatnot. So that, and that's part of where I'm starting to get a little, oh, well. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's involving a child or a youth, and we do, mm -hmm. we do have work areas that involve children in recreation, for example. Uh, that is, that's what that section would be referring to. Okay. So it could potentially be a citizen using one of our facilities, disclosing an incident that occurred to them by a staff member. That's what we're looking at potentially there. You have to say that again? It would be a, a user of the facility, so a citizen, disclosing to the town an, an abuse or molestation incident that was either witnessed or experienced. On uh, our prop, yes. On, either on the prop. Okay, so then, because I, I guess where I'm getting at this is <laughs> if, when we talk abuse and molestation, to me, there's like legalities, there's, um, RCMP, there's that type. Child family services only. Yeah, so I guess I just want to, when I read it, I'm a little confused as to, I guess, what our role in this is. I'm not necessarily opposed to having the policy by any means, but I'm thinking if they're disclosing to us, should they not be disclosing to law enforcement? Uh, absolutely, that, that's what we would absolutely encourage them to do, and, and in our policy it says that we ourselves may need to report to law enforcement directly uh, if we believe the individual is in danger. Um, the second so sentence I, states everything we've talked about. The second sentence of the purposes of policy stress the importance of that commitment by educating individuals, all individuals, about abuse, outlining how the town will work to prevent abuse, that's our job, to prevent abuse, and how abuse or suspected abuse can be reported and addressed by the town. So we have to report it, we are our guys, or we've seen it, or somebody reports it to us, and we address it. Okay, further discussion? Um, yeah, I just have um, section nine talks to training of all staff. Um, for, um, First question being, um, does this include council or just staff? And the second part of that question, is there a cost for the training? And have we accounted for it in a, the budgeting? There, it does include council. It will include all staff. There, we're looking into what the province would like to provide. Maybe AMM would like to provide. If, we, if all municipalities have to do this, we're expecting there to be some sort of assistance. But uh, we're waiting to hear back on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.7. Result of the Recreation Department initiate a hiring process to replace deck supervisor position. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, I did have a question. Okay, go ahead. Is it just one position we're looking to fill or we have multiple? One, replace one. Okay, thank you. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10, 10 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30155 to number 30161, totaling four. $1,028.78 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5306 to number 5310 totaling $102,636.34 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $35,091.29 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 
10.2. Resolve the financial statements for the one month ending January 31st, 2023 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor or Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor uh, Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have <coughs> one question, uh, probably because I'm new, but why do we have this coming to us this way when we haven't had it in the previous months? We have them each month. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a little bit behind due to our deadlines from the province. Uh, CFO Benita had a, has a lot of deadlines from uh, January to April, uh, so it has taken time to him to catch up with January and February's. Uh, well, you would have seen each month at some point in time. Okay, so this is just delayed. It is. Okay, because I the last couple of months I couldn't remember anything, and I'm just like, well, why are we getting this now? And is it something to do with the budget process? So no, thank you right. for clarifying. Yeah. I've got a lot to learn. I don't. And I promise I'll retain it all the first time. And just so council knows, it is acceptable that yeah. it's this late because we do have a lot of deadlines at the beginning of the year. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Result of the financial statements for the two months ending February 28, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, this relates to both January and February, but uh, I'll save it for February. In regards to uh, the vehicle expense in the Centennial Arena and the Recreation Wellness Center, um, as of the end of February, we're at 57.7% of the anticipated budget. Um, there. Is there an explanation or a variance as to why um, we've, in two months of operation, we've already went through 57% of the anticipated budget for the vehicle expense for those two facilities? CFO Gadita? Because uh, the auto pack uh, was uh, due uh, in February, so that auto pack for the entire year has already been expensed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Mr. <clears throat> Medwood? Well, on that note, now that I have a better idea of what one should be looking for on these reports, um, our other revenue licenses is at 43.8%. And I see that re sales of goods returns from an, in investments is at 65.1%. What's your question? Why, if we're only two months in, are we exceeding or coming up on that 50% or better? I think I know the answer, but I'll let CFO get the answer. Uh, we budget conservatively on the revenue side of things, and uh, interest rates are quite high now. That's compared as they were, say, even two years ago. Okay. okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you, CFO Gadina. 13. Result of pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council. Oh, motion number 12. Notice of motion. Oh. So my, my apologies. I didn't even. I, I, I didn't either because mine's blank. No, it's because a councillor's bringing, I, my, what I should be doing is, is there any notice of motion? And then a council can respond. So my error. So, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, the notice of motions on the crisis center to rescind the previous resolution. I give notice of my intention to bring forward resolution 2023-0123 from the March 21st, 2023 regular meeting of council, council to be rescinded at the next regular meeting of council. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So we, he moves this, and we, I need a seconder, or, no, or no seconders required? 
No, it's just a notice to council that it will be the resolution. It'll will be, be coming back. back. At the okay, next so then that uh, that will come back at our next yeah, one. The next one, yes. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. And then there's no discussion on it. We'll have a discussion on it at that time. <clears throat> okay, uh, my apologies. Am I allowed to ask a question? This is a new councillor question. Can you please explain what just happened? Okay, so we, we, this is about. <laughs> we had a previous resolution that was passed. Okay. Okay. But <clears throat> something happened with that where the organization decided that they, they're turning back the funds, as, as you know, because we had the conversation last week. So, but we still have a resolution sitting there that we're going to give the money. Deputy Mayor Morio has brought forward a notice of motion to bring that resolution forward so that we can rescind it and actually remove it from the book, so to speak. Okay, so in general <coughs> terms, because I understand the process that's happening right now, but in general terms, what is the purpose of notice of motion in the agenda? To bring back a resolution. Okay, so it's something that's already been passed? No, yes, you get one year to bring any resolution back to the table. So after a year, it is final. But uh, the chair of the meeting, uh, she'll always ask, is there any resolutions that council would like to bring forward? Okay, so any resolution that is under a year old can be brought back to you? It, okay. it explains it in our procedures bylaw. There's a section for when to bring, how to bring back a resolution. That's Thank you, I'll either. review that again for that section. <laughs> I'm just like, I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> We're going into camera now? No. I have a question on notice of motion. Okay. So it's not only for to bring back resolutions that were prior, a council can bring a motion forward at notice of motion, right? That's correct. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. That's a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Is there any more questions on notice of motion? Okay, perfect. Do you want a motion on the uh, one that's before or after? <laughs> after is fine. Res okay, so here we go again. So result of pursuance of sections 152. Three of the Municipal Act, Council will go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed is the arena project. And I don't think there was anything else, is there? The uh, process. For bidding on the Conrad Apartments. Oh. oh, right. That's right. Yes. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay. We're having a resolution come forward. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Poole, are you drafting one up there? Uh, we'll just hit refresh, it'll be up there. Okay. I found what uh, Councilor Bob So items now. arising out of um, camera. We have a resolution. Are we satisfied with that resolution? Or should I say, pro instead of no notice period, should I say process? Yeah. Notice period will be included in the process. Yeah. Looks good. And then obviously council will see the process. Initiate the process for the... Tell is it now? To, yeah, mm -hmm. refresh. Okay. Okay, so 15 items arising on a camera. Result of the... Of the let's try this again. Result that administration initiate the process for the demolition and cleanup a property located at 124 Fifth Avenue South, roll number 26,000.00, moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. The result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10.23 p.m., moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. It's all Good night. That.